Hello everybody, it's you Zero Bytes back with another video. So for this week's video, we're going to be doing a complete 180 and actually putting into some effort into this content. So here we go, let's go. So this video is going to be a tutorial on how to make fursuit sandals. It's getting to around, you know, sort of convention seasons and such. So I thought I'd take the time to show you guys how to make a more sleek and slender design, so to speak on fursuit sandals because a lot of them are really clunky and have a ton of buckles which is fine because you know you really don't want those coming off but at the same time I prefer more sort of sleek innovative ones because a lot of them look really invasive and just a bit bleh, in my opinion so this is a design that I came up with to try and you know balance the two in terms of appeal and them functioning and doing the job that they're supposed to do and I managed to get it so I thought I'd show you this design and hopefully you guys can follow along and make these for yourself so let's go okay then so these are the tools that you're going to need so you're going to need A2 paper so you're going to want a decent sized piece of paper you're going to want a good sturdy set of scissors either fabric scissors or you know just some you know really sharp sort of heavy duty scissors you're going to want some chalk and a pencil you're going to want hot glue gun and obviously the glue sticks then you're going to want velcro so i've gone with three inch wide velcro and then you're going to want industrial elastic strips those again are three inch as well in terms of colors you can choose whatever color you like to suit you know the design you're sort of going for or the color scheme of your fursuit so there's that i've gone ahead and traced around my paw pads already just to speed the process up a little bit hence why you can see a cut out template already Okay, so in addition to those, you're going to need your feet paws, just the one will do, you don't need to do both. Then you're also going to need EVA foam, they usually come like this in jigsaw pieces. I went for the 28 inches one, I got about two tracings from each piece. Okay, so first thing I want to say, you're going to have to excuse my filthy desk as you can see this desk is used for a lot of different things from all the hot glue and like the merg stains and whatnot so you're just gonna have to excuse that so of course you're going to need to get your paw and then again you want to get a piece of paper big enough to put said paw on and trace around it it's imperative that you use pencil when you're tracing around your paw you don't want to use anything like permanent marker or oil crayons or anything like that please just make sure that you're using pencils so you don't get any oils or whatnot on your feet and then of course after you've traced it you're going to want to cut it out keep it as accurate as possible okay so once you've cut out your template you're going to want to pull these pieces off um i usually just scrap them and keep them for later just in case you know they might be useful for something else but you don't generally want those you just want to take them off and put them to the side okay so then after you've pulled those off you're going to want to stick your template onto the foam i usually shove it in the corner just to preserve the space so you're not wasting too much material so you really want to sort of cram it in there so you're not again wasting too much of the foam should you make a mistake or whatever okay so I, this is where I take this pastel and I just trace around the paw the reason why I use pastels because you can rub it off later literally you can just brush it off like dust so it won't stay on basically and leave nasty sort of marks or anything so when you're tracing over the pole obviously you know make sure you that you have a sturdy hand on the tracing because you don't want it dancing around you can use something like a paperweight if that helps you but you really want to make sure that you get it as close to the edge of the paper as possible if that makes sense and again so here i'm flipping it and then shoving it in the corner again to preserve as much material as possible because you don't want too much waste. Okay, 
so this is where the cutting comes in play. So, in my experience, cutting these sheets is a little bit difficult. Like, it does put a lot of pressure on your wrist. So, if you've got something like RSI, you maybe want to ask someone to give you a hand because it can be a little bit straining. You can use other scissors if it makes your life easier. Just do whatever makes this part easier because it is a bit tricky cutting EVA foam sheets. You can use an X-Acto knife as well, but I didn't want to on my glass desk. <laughs> What I usually find easy is if you just cut like it in half because then you're not fighting with the size of the sheet so that makes sense, it just makes it easier to move about. So once you've cut one out just put one to the side just so you can focus on you know one at a time instead of fighting with two of them and then again you'll just want to cut it smaller just so it's easy to work with and move about and getting corners such as between the beans So apologies for this, I remember that this day was a pain in the ass to film because the light was being a right pain in the ass, not my ring light, just the light in general. I was hoping to use more natural light for this video and the sun kept pissing around so apologies for the lighting going a bit. I've only just noticed how disgusting those marks on my desk look. I really need to clean it. <laughs> Like I said, I use this desk for many, many pieces of art and of all different media, so it's kind of just always in a groggy state. <laughs> Okay, so now we've got the both out. I'm just looking around the cutting and you can kind of see here my camera's being a butt. It's really rough, there's loads of like loose jagged bits. 
hanging around. I mean, you can't really see it. You can see it better on the one on my desk. You can kind of see it all bumpy and lumpy. And I'm gonna show you how to sort that out in just a moment. Okay, so to sort out those lumpy and bumpy bits, you're going to need, right, you're going to need this tool, or you can achieve this with very, very fine sandpaper. I stress fine, you don't want to use anything used for wood, it needs to be fine. Or you can get, can get like one of these hand rollers, they, they have like a little bit at the front, I, I don't know what the tool's actually called. Um, but it's kind of like one of those things in DT, if you had those sanding belts, it's kind of like that, just a smaller and handheld version. I usually use a low setting and slowly build it up depending on the roughness of the sides. But eventually I do go to like the, the third set speed setting. But I usually start off at one, just so I can get my handling right on the tool and then I'll gradually increase it. Like I said, this step is completely optional. But this is just what I do because I'm extremely fussy with like little bits like that. It has to be all smooth and I'm a bit of a perfectionist. Again, completely optional and you don't need to use this hand tool. You can just use fine sandpaper if the little naggly bits bother you like they do with me. You don't have to do this at all. Now, if you are going to do this, I stress that you do use a mask to cover your face. These, like the little dust pieces that come off these can be very harmful to your health if you do breathe them in. Please make sure that you do use a mask if you're actually going to do this. So you can really see the difference here between the sanded one on 
the right hand side compared to the one on the left I'm kind of like sandwiching them here together and you can't really see that at all oh there you go so yeah the bottom one's really nice and smooth and then the top one's all rough and jagged from the cutting so it does make it look nicer if you're going for a sort of cleaner more professional kind of look but again like I said that's completely optional you do not have to do that at all and again you don't have to use that powered sander or whatever it's called I don't know you can just use just fine sandpaper to achieve this as well and very lightly rubbing against it it will take longer of course but you know if you want a sort of cleaner more professional look then you know it might be worth it in your eyes so just again completely optional So my camera actually cut out here, so I'm just starting again. I've got a pop up on my phone which stopped the recording, which is super, super annoying. But we're just carrying on. I mean, you can see already how smoother the edges look around the feet, the, the um, sandals. They just look so much nicer, in my opinion. But now you can really see the difference, how smooth it is. It's just nicer and more visually appealing okay so now I'm just sort of sizing it out just to make sure you know that it is all correct and it's not sort of too big if that makes sense <laughs> you don't want it hanging out too much otherwise it's going to be very difficult to walk on because I struggle with walking in these feet paws anyway I'm only a size 5 and yeah walking in these is very difficult okay so next what you're gonna want to do is get your three inch industrial elastic was what this was labeled out when I bought it this stuff is super strong so it will do the job you don't want anything flimsy color wise I just went with white because Yuzuru's feet are white I just again wanted it to sort of blend in and not look very gaudy as it were but you can just get whatever color you like this is just the color that I chose for mine so what I'm doing here is sizing around the front so this design it has a strap on the front right on the toe beans and it has another strap near to the back that comes around and rests just on the ankle just on the very sort of top of the ankle so it means you don't actually have to use any clips or whatnot if you're like me and you don't really want to use clips in your sandals this is a good alternative <laughs> This is just me just figuring out how it's going to look. Just sizing up, just making sure I get you know the right size. Again, this is elastic, so it doesn't matter if you do it a little bit shorter. But the less strain on the elastic, the better. Because when you go to glue the Velcro on, you don't want it to stretch too much. Otherwise, eventually it will just look gnarly and gross. So this is where the velcro comes in. We're just gonna decide how big of a velcro piece I went for. So this is a hexagon back in. So if you look on it, it's kind of like hexagony shape. It just makes it easier if you don't want to hot glue it. You can sew it. 
it's completely up to you if you want to hot glue it or sew it. Personally, it doesn't matter either way in my opinion, but if you want a sort of more sort of sandy style, I mean that doesn't make sense at all. But if you want a more sort of tailored style, you can you can sew it. So later on, I do actually make these pieces smaller because I cut them too big. I mean, that's how big here, that's how big I cut them originally. And then when I actually put the straps on and stuff, I decided that no, these are way too big and I actually did cut them down a bit. Again, you know, you really want to make sure that you do size these things properly. You'd rather cut too big than too small because if you cut too big at least you can trim it down to the right size but if you cut too small then there's not much you can do you have to completely redo it and that'll just be a waste and then once you're done with it you can just put the little thingy on you should get like a little sealable tag on it just so you can stick it on so it doesn't unravel everywhere all over the floor or in storage so once you just finish with it just put it to the side just so you've got more working space So yeah, this bit was really tricky because I didn't, I wanted it to be close to the edge of the beams without them slipping off, but not have it too close to the end strap if that makes sense, because otherwise it'll just look a bit weird in my opinion. When I was doing this it looked a bit weird, so this was just me trying to figure out how I was going to position everything correctly. Just take the time to position things correctly because it will look better in the long run. Positioning is just as important as general build. If things aren't positioned quick, you know, nicely, then it can compromise the overall looks of a final product. But if you're not fussed about that, go for it. So the, I will stress before somebody comments, the black marks all over Yuzuru's beans is dust from when I shaved down the EVA foam, so do not worry, it's not ink or whatever, it's just all those little bits of dust fibers. So again, it just goes to show how far they get, they get absolutely everywhere, they get in your clothes, they get in your hair, they get under your nails. So again, it's imperative that if you are going to do what I did, that you wear a mask, because it can be dangerous if you breathe it in, especially if you're asthmatic. Okay, so <laughs> this is where I fucked up a little bit. I did fuck up twice. In this, I rem if I remember correctly, so, some of the pieces were bigger than other big pieces. They were all kind of mixed up and scrambled around, so there's a lot of fumbling around here. When you cut your pieces, do keep them together. Don't do what I did. <laughs> I mixed up my pieces, so I had to do a bit of cutting and trimming down just to make sure that everything made sense. For the longest time, I was like, what? This piece is longer than that piece, and this short one is shorter than that short one, and it was very confusing. So just make sure you know you keep your short pieces together and your long pieces together.
Okay, so here I make little incisions on the sides just so I know where to glue down the elastic parts. Before then, again, as you can see, I'm so I make incisions on the sides, so then when I put it on top, I know roughly where to put the incisions on top. So I put little holes on either side of the elastic straps, and you'll see why in just a moment. There you are, look, just either side, just give it a little poke just to leave a mark. And then there I just sort of put it across just so I can make sure that I put um, the other two indents evenly with the other ones on the left hand side. So you want everything to sort of be even and symmetrical basically. Okay so the reason why I made those marks is because of this. So you want to make these little score marks, just scratch it up without going too far from the dots. So the reason why you do this is so it has, when you put the glue on, the glue has something to grip to, so it won't just pull off. You just want it to be all nice and sort of scratched up like that. So again, when you glue the strap down to the EVA foam, it's going to stay there. It just gives it something to bite onto, basically. And I made those marks so when you did scratch it up, you wouldn't go out the boundary. So when you glued on the straps, you wouldn't you wouldn't see the marks, basically. If that makes sense at all. <laughs> It'll make sense later on when you see it all together. Okay, so yeah, this is when I actually resized the pieces, look, I did end up resizing them because they were far too big in my opinion. But that's absolutely fine, again, you'd rather cut pieces too big than too small because again, if you cut them too big, at least you can resize them, but if you cut it too small, then you know, you're, you've wasted the material and you've got to size it again. Okay, so when you do glue onto the back of your Velcro, what I do is then I flip it over and really push down with the palm of my hand. This is so you spread the glue evenly, so when it does dry there's not going to be any like random bumps and lumps, so it will be all nice and smooth and consistent really sort of you know yeah really yeah I'm proper going for it look, look, look I'm proper like slapping it almost like Ugh! yeah as you can see look it's all nice and smooth ignore the lemon EVA dust it's like I said that stuff gets everywhere <laughs> okay so yeah if you do get like these excess blobs of glue don't worry just give them a little trim off and then you're you're good to go Just slather the hot glue on. You can spread it around with the nozzle like I am doing. You just really want to make sure you know you do cover it all. If some of the glue is cooling down at the top, you can go back up and just sort of remelt it with your hot glue. That's absolutely fine. So don't stress. As long as it's not solid dry, you'll be okay.
and again just making sure it all lines up correctly all nice and flat and then give it a good old squish and that's it just you know proper smush it there you are that's it <laughs> Jesus, I was really going for it with this one. See so yeah, again, they're all nice and smooth. Just take the extra time, just you know, make sure everything's all nice and consistent and presentable. What I did was I glued up the top just so any bits fraying around the top, it wouldn't then like you know sort of make a mess. Like I said, these extra things are all optional. You don't have to do this. This is just me because I prefer things to last longer and look nicer in general. But it just stops fraying, basically. And um, again, if you've got any funky glue lumps, you can just cut it off. I think I do change it later on as well. I give it a bit more of a curve. You'll see what I mean in a minute, but those are the two straps. And yeah, you can see what I mean by the little black mark. Okay, yeah, so this is where I put the design in as it were. I just go around and cut off the edge just to give it a sort of curved more round look I thought that it would make it more visually appealing and it does it does kind of add a bit of a style to it so yeah you've got a nice sort of curved velcro strap which I thought was pretty nice in my opinion like I said you don't have to do some of the, like some of these things like the sanding down and all these extra sort of fancy ass things, you don't have to do them, this is just me. And again, just going around the edge, just making sure I get the velcro and the edge of the elastic just to stop any fraying. If you are going to do this, you only want to make sure that you are using the minimal amount of glue. You don't need a massive thick blob, you literally just need like a very, very, very thin sheet of hot glue just to stop any fraying. You don't need that much. So what I'm doing here is I'm already using the one that I've sort of cut round and put the velcro on and I'm putting on it onto one that doesn't have any velcro just so I have a template just again just to make sure everything's all consistent and even. Okay so what I'm doing here is I am putting it down at an angle. The reason why you want to do that and not just pull it straight is so when it actually goes over your paw, it stays flat onto the base of your paw and doesn't stick up and out. So it lies nice and flat, whereas if you pull it straight, it would, it would kind of, yeah, it would pop out and stick around the base, if that makes sense. So yeah, put it in an angle if your paws are like mine. just lays over the beans and whatnot nicely without giving the base of the elastic a sort of lumpy and risen up lifted appeal. So one thing I will say about this bit is you really, unlike with the gluing of the velcro, you really want to sort of push it and mush it down into the score marks to really make sure that the glue has bitten onto the EVA foam so it's not going to budge anywhere. Okay, so what I do here is again, I glue up any 
fraying edges and then I actually go around the sides as well just to melt the already set glue and I thin it out just so it's not clumpy in appearance in appearance just again so it's all nice and flat it does give it a slight wet sheen as it were but at least it's not like globs of glue so yeah you can kind of see what I mean here just so it's all nice and sort of flat so again, you really want to sort of slather on the glue like I am here. Just really slather it on. Don't be too stingy with it. get a sense of you know the difference between the like edges that I melted down on the one the one that I've already glued down and the one that I'm already melting it just it does make it look a bit nicer okay so what I do here is I just make sure that it's all glue, glue, it's all sealed up nicely around the sort of edges of the elastic. So you really want to make sure those are covered as well because if not, it will slowly start to peel away. Granted, it probably won't come off for a very, very long time, but it will start to look gnarly and nasty if those aren't sealed up. And what I do is while I do um, melt down any sort of bumpy glue bits around there as well just to make it all nice and smooth like how I did with the edges of the elastic okay, so that's just me just making sure that it's nicely lined up oh look at that it looks so pretty and then just pulling it off you do have any bits where the velcro isn't glued on around the edges don't worry just add a bit more glue around the edges and just sort of flip it over and flatten it again if you do get any sort of bits where you smush it down and the glue sort of comes out you can just do what I've done around the edges of the elastic and just sort of thin it out yeah so you can see here I do get glue on me if you so I would recommend using gloves I've done this so many times where I burnt myself with the glue gun I can just touch glue that I've literally just put on you shouldn't and it's a very bad thing I do do because it can still damage your fingers so make sure that you use gloves or something if you're a bit clumsy like me So this, I decided that I need to shorten these as well. Again, if you do need to shorten things, it's absolutely fine. Don't worry about it. velcro just really slather on the glue you want to make sure that you cover it all again if it does start to cool down as you go along just sort of take the nozzle and just skim it over the cooling down glue it just heats it up basically and makes it you know do its job <laughs> Again, so just making sure you know that all the glue spreads out evenly by using my whole palm of my hand 
just to smush it down. And again, all nice and smooth as you can see from what my, hmm, my camera does really struggle in low light. <laughs> Again, sorry about all the changing light levels. It was a pain in the ass to film this day. Like I said, because the sun was being an ass. But there you go, look. It's focused now. You can see that's all nice and smooth. <laughs> so this is where I use my template from where I put in the sort of curved design. And then I'm just going around and doing the same again. Just cutting out. around the template. So this time instead of, so you can kind of see like one's facing down towards the beams, the elastic that is, so the two nearest to the beams are facing down towards the beams and the ones at the sort of heel area are facing to the heel. Because of the angle that it goes over, you kind of want it to sort of face that direction so it goes up and around and lies flat on the fursuit feet, it just makes it look nice there. Because if you didn't do that, what would happen was, again, it would lift up sort of at the base of the elastic, it would lift up and sort of fold and look a bit uh, ill-fitted, as it were. So again, this is just me just pointing the two marks so I know how far I can do the score marks without it being visible when I put the elastic on. Again, yeah, you really want to make sure that you score it up. Don't go too deep, otherwise you'll get these sort of horrible sort of ripped up sections. I kind of go a little bit too deep in some areas as you can see. Kind of got bits or like holes as it were. You just want to do enough to leave sort of bumpy rough texture as it were. And not actually damage the UVA film itself. So yeah, you can kind of see there that some of them I went a bit too deep. So again, yeah, you really want to make sure that you do push down, use your fingers, use your knuckles, use your palm, whatever's easiest for you, just to make sure that it really is sort of smushed in there. And then again, I'm just sort of going around the edge and making sure it's not going to fray and just make it a bit more presentable. Like I said, you don't have to do this, it's just, just me being really, really nitpicky. So I do actually use scissors sometimes just to make sure that I really sort of push down around the rim of the EVA foam just to make sure that the elastic joins up nicely with the edge of the EVA foam. But 
may just notice that blob of glue just sort of dancing around on that foam there. <laughs> That's really annoying me. <laughs> I have so you see me like double checking the sizes and the angles and where things will go it is okay to do that it just reduces the chance of a mistake but with this one I fucked up anyway you'll see why in a moment I yeah so you can see here I'm gluing it the wrong way round so this velcro piece needed to be facing down to the desk like the one is overlapping I fucked up if you do do this, don't do what I did later on. So what I ended up doing is I ended up taking this strap completely off, which did make it a little bit messy. <laughs> if you do do, if you do make this mistake, pull off the Velcro. It's a lot easier. I did the same mistake with the other one as well. I couldn't believe it when I did that. Just pull off the Velcro and stick it on the other side. It's absolutely fine. It's a lot easier and doesn't make a massive mess. Yeah, just thought I thought I would cut it out, but then I also thought actually, you know, you know what, I'll keep it in so then I can kind of use it as an example of what to do if you do make a mistake like this. God, this makes me so sad. I sealed it all and everything and I still haven't noticed. But there you go, look, you can kind of see that there, if you do get bits like that, you do need to make sure that they are sealed up and glued down to the foam. Because like I said, otherwise eventually it will sort of rip and look really tatty. <laughs> Again, don't be scared to use your tools, that's why you have them, they're there for a reason to help you. You can use anything that makes life easier, whether it be the base like scissors or whatnot, anything that makes your life easier, you can use. So yeah, so you can kind of see a, look, a nice overview or the glue bits are nicely sort of melted down to a nice thin sheen as it were, everything's all nice and covered. just trying on and this is also when I realized that I glued one of the straps on the wrong way around. This is me desperately trying to get those bits of EVA dust off of my... But yeah, you can kind of see what I meant by the elastic, if it's better that you glue it at an angle because it lies flat around the base of the foot, if you can kind of see. It lies flat, it doesn't poke out anywhere. So if you do glue it at an angle, it just, yeah, it lies flat on the feet at the base and doesn't stick out. And this is when I realised that, okay. <laughs> yeah, this is the heartbreaking moment when I realised I glued it on the wrong way. Oh, oh, so sad. And then this is me thinking, well, at least that first strap looks nice. That looks nice and lined up. <laughs> So yeah, just for a sense of you know how strong it is, look, I'm really sort of pulling here. This was really hard to pull off. Like I was pulling and pulling and pulling, but it was it was really resistant. 
So just for a sense of scale on how strong it is, it is really, really strong. But like I say, if you do mess up, like I did here, just take off the Velcro and stick it on the other side because it's a lot easier to take off the Velcro than it is to rip the whole strap off because now I've got this horrible sort of black thing. I did melt this off so I got my hot glue going. I just ran it over just to peel it off but it is still a bit grubby from my mistake. But yeah, like I said, I left this in just so you know, you knew what to do should you have messed up. But it is not the end of the world because like I said, people can't see that bit anyway. But yeah. That's just my fussiness. So yeah, like I said, don't rip off the whole thing. If you glue a Velcro wrong way, just rip off the Velcro and stick it on the other side. It's a lot easier. So I made the same mistake on the same strap as well on the other one. And I thought, you know what, I'm just gonna rip off the Velcro and that was a lot easier. So yeah, don't worry if you make a mistake. Here I am look, going around the edges, just sort of cleaning it up the best I possibly can. You will notice that I did re-scratch it. Should you do the silly thing that I did and rip off the entire elastic, you will need to re-scratch up the surface again so it has something to bite to. And again, this is just me sort of thinning out the glue, just making sure. Oh, hello, fly. Oh, hi. <laughs> hi. <laughs> so, yeah, like I said, this is just me just thinning out the glue, just making sure. Oh, excuse me, that there's no lumps that are gonna stick into the base of. Yeah, so this is. <laughs> this is me desperately trying to get the layer of EVA foam off of the strap here. Again, I probably should have cut this part, but I am leaving this in just so you can get a sense of how difficult it is to get this off of your strap if you do decide to rip off the elastic and not the Velcro. <laughs> oh God. everything in place, everything's all nice and dry. You can then put it onto your pole and test it out, which I'm doing here. Just testing up the sizing, that sort of jazz, making sure everything lies nice and flat, especially around where the elastic meets the EVA foam. That's why you glue it at an angle, just so it doesn't stick out. I mean, it is poking out a little bit, just in the right-hand corner here, but for the most part, it is lying flat to the toe beans. One thing I will say with if you're going to use Velcro, not but buckles, is you do need to be careful when you do rip the Velcro off. Especially, oh that bloody fly! <laughs> especially if there's fur in the Velcro, you do need to be careful. You just need to be careful when you're putting it on and off, otherwise you could rip out some fur, but apart from that, I do prefer this design to the ones with buckles on, because they just look really sort of, I don't know, clunky and tacky. 
Okay, in my opinion. So this is just some blue. Look at the side. It's beautiful. I love it. enjoyed this video this video did take me a very very long time to make so I do hope you appreciate it I was filming for an hour and a half and then I had to record this audio which you are listening to now over separately just because of the nature of it it wouldn't have worked if I did it you know from my mobile or whatever you know I had to record it separately so I do hope that you enjoyed this video and that it was useful. Let me know if this was useful. And please do show this to your other furry friends. Because I'm sure they would appreciate this tutorial as well. So, there's that. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you have a fabulous day slash evening, wherever you're watching this from. And I shall see you in the next video. Share this with your friends. I'm sure they would love it and I'd love it too. Hint, hint. <laughs> but apart from that, I shall see you in the next one. Ta-ra!